there's only 141 days left of 2023, at least if I were to count them today. So I want to share 10 main things I believe you should avoid doing starting from today if you want to finish off the year right. Since everybody likes to tell us what to do all the damn time, I decided to make a video around things we shouldn't do. Things we don't have to do. Sounds easier, no? Well, let's see how easy all this is going to be. Today's topic is very straightforward, so without further ado, I just want to jump right into it. But before that, let me try my matcha latte. To all the girlies who like their matcha latte, cheers. Let's start with number one. Stop dwelling on how the last seven months have passed you by. Stop being sad about all the things that you said you're going to do, but you haven't even taken any actions on. Like you said, you're going to work out five times a week and stop eating fast foods, but you haven't yet. Or the fact that you said you're going to start reading all the books that you have on your list and finish at least one book a month, but you haven't even finished two books ever since 2023 started. You need to understand that you can change the past, but you can change the future by focusing on your present time and the actions that are necessary for you to take in order for you to achieve what you desire. Dwelling on the past won't fix anything for you anyways. Number two, don't focus on all the things that didn't happen and focus on the things that did. I know for a fact, whenever I look at my vision board, I look at all the things that hasn't happened for me yet. And did you hear that? I said yet. Because a lot can happen in the next five months and I'm going to do whatever is in my power and whatever I'm responsible for and leave the rest to the one up there and believe and trust that whatever happens is going to be in my favor. Yes, I don't have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube yet or a million followers on TikTok, but my health has improved and my body has been healing. I've been traveling at least twice ever since 2023 started. Uh, one to the States and one to Mexico, and I'm going to go on another one next month. And yes, the trips that I went on were the ones that I had on my vision board, this, not the cities that was on my vision board, but the whole purpose and intention behind me putting those pictures on my vision board was to create unforgettable memories and have fun and enjoy life. And that's exactly what happened. Sometimes we do receive what we want just in a different form and shape than we expected. Number three. Stop hanging out with your not-so-cool friends. I'm not trying to offend anyone here, but if you spend most of your time with friends that don't even have the type of lifestyle you want to have, then don't be surprised when you don't end up getting to where you want. You want to have a better lifestyle? Start hanging out with the people who have that. By exposing yourself to that, you're exposing yourself to the possibilities on how you can achieve the same thing. By you hanging out with the same people all the time, you will never learn anything outside of your own little bubble. Number four, don't wish things were easier. You should were better. And no, I did not come up with that, but Jim Ron definitely did. What I believe is that a lot of times we actually have more control over our lives than we think, but somehow our instant reaction to things when they get tough is to give up. It's so easy to be strong, happy, and grateful when things are going the way we wanted and we've planned. But what about the times when BS hits the fan? How do you react? Or a better way of saying it is, how do you respond? So don't sit in one place and wish you had that dream job or wish that you had that relationship you would die for. Instead, focus on what needs to be changed and how you can become a better person to receive those things that you desire. Number five, don't wait until December to reflect on how your year has been so far. Grab a pen and a paper and write down all the things that you said you're going to do and you're going to achieve, but you haven't yet. Look for real answers and reasons behind why you haven't taken any steps towards the things that you said you're going to do. Just like there is always a reason behind everything that we do, there's always a reason behind everything we don't do or want to do. For example, if you wanted to start a YouTube channel this year, but you haven't yet, Reflect on the why not. Are you afraid of being judged or are you afraid of failing? The truth is, I also wanted to start my YouTube channel in the beginning of the year, which would have been January, but I didn't up until a month ago. Do you know why? Because I kept using excuses of why I couldn't do it. I kept telling myself, I don't have the background. 
that I want. I don't have the microphone. I don't have good lighting. I don't have a camera. But I think what really was stopping me from taking actions was my perfectionism. I wanted to start when I was fully prepared and ready, when I was completely sure of what I really wanted to make videos around and what would it be about. And it wasn't until I came across this video of Mr. Beast and how he was talking about how your first hundred videos is not going to get any views and you shouldn't expect anything. But once you pass that hundred videos you've created, then you can look into what's been working and what hasn't been working. That's when I was like, oh, well, if I start today and start posting at least two videos a week, by the end of this year, I would have at least uploaded around 50 videos. So basically, I would have been one step closer to my goal. You know, I just got sick and tired and I didn't want to finish another year and let another year pass by and then tell myself in my New Year's resolution that I'm going to start my YouTube channel. I wanted to just start it and I wanted to tell myself at the end of the year that, you know what? I did it. Guess what? I'm recording in the middle of my living room right now. I don't have the microphone I need. The lighting is not also perfect. My camera that I'm using is actually a borrowed camera from my friend. But at least I'm keeping my word to myself and I'm doing what I said I'm going to do. And I actually already feel more accomplished um, by what I've done so far with my YouTube channel. I'm proud of myself for just taking those actions. Hold on a second. I think I completely forgot to introduce myself. Oh well. Hey you, if it's your first time here, I'm Dee, welcome to my channel, and don't forget to subscribe if you like videos around self-improvement, relationship, and a little bit of lifestyle. Now, let's go to number six, shall we? Don't wait for the new year to get all excited about life again. A lot of people get hyped up about the new year as soon as we get close to December. It's Christmas and it's New Year and everybody's happy and everybody's in a good mood and everybody's grateful and everybody's excited about all the things that they're going to accomplish this year and the fact that this is going to be their year. But as soon as we get to mid-year, most people give up on their goals and dreams already. And they start stressing out, they're getting depressed about how most of the things that they wanted hasn't happened yet and it's going to be the end of the year. And they start feeling bad for themselves and they feel like, oh, nothing ever goes my way. But as soon as we get to two months before the new year again, they get all excited and hyped up again. It's like we literally are stuck in a vicious cycle. So what I'm trying to say is you don't have to wait for special occasions for you to become serious about your life. You don't need an excuse like new year, new me to make the changes you should have made five years ago. I feel like everybody would have been better off with treating Christmas and New Year just like any other holiday. Rather than making it all about New Year's resolutions and get all hyped up for, that doesn't even last for a few months. And the hype is the main reason why a lot of us or a lot of people end up setting up unrealistic goals for themselves. For example, this person hasn't even worked out once a week in the past one year, but they decide to write down their goals, I'm going to work out seven times a week. I think if we were to focus on setting up the type of goals, plans, and strategies that we can stick to in the long run, we would definitely have better results. But unfortunately, a lot of us rather sacrifice our long-term commitment and results over that instant gratification and the good feeling that we get by setting up all these amazing targets and goals. Number seven, don't carry relationships, friendships, and things with yourself to the end of the year that no longer serve you. If you don't get rid of things or people that no longer are good for you or serve the highest version of yourself you're becoming before the new year, the chances of you carrying them with you into the new year is even higher. You know the saying, out with the old, in with the new? That's how you should think. You don't want to bring anything associated with the older version of you into a year you're trying to become better and change and level up and achieve better things. Don't forget that. Number eight, stop resenting other people for getting the things you desire this year instead of you. Stop questioning how come they got everything they wanted but not you. How come they got the brand deals and brand trips and interviews, the podcast interviews in a sort of you. There is enough for all of us out there. Nobody's taking away from anyone by becoming successful, happy, and wealthy. Everyone has their own pace and timing. You just keep doing you and believe 
that everything is going to work out for you. And once it does, it's going to be better than you've ever imagined. Don't forget to be happy for them and pray for their success and ask God to give them even more. Because remember what the golden rule says? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also for them, for this is the law and prophets. You won't receive good if you don't want good for others. You won't be treated well if you don't treat others well. And that's the truth. And as simple as it is, some people just don't want to obey God's rules. Number nine, stop letting your whole life pass you by without learning how to live in the present moment. Stop letting your jobs, social media, TV, movies, etc. to take away the time you want to spend and you get to spend with your loved ones. A lot of us think we have all the time in the world to do these things, but we don't. Sometimes in a blank of an eye, you could lose someone you deeply love. You may think, what does this have to do with the end of the year? But what you don't think of is that the people that you love and you have by your side this year might not be there with you next year. So instead of wishing that the year would pass by quickly and forget about all the good and bad you get to experience with the important people in your life, embrace these times and moments you get to have with them before it's too late. And finally, number 10. Don't finish off the year with the same old habits and mindset as last year. Sometimes we may think it's the plan that is not properly done or it's the actions that we don't take and that's why we're stuck in the one spot we've been for the past five years. But no, it goes deeper than that. There is a formula to a better you. Better thoughts, better feelings, better actions, better results equals the better you. It all starts with the type of thoughts you have on a day-to-day -day basis because those thoughts become feelings and sometimes they become strong enough to affect the actions we take that goes hand in hand with these feelings and at the end it ends up being the type of results we never wished for. So to change the outcome about what you want, you need to change the way you think about it and your thoughts. For example, if you're on a diet to lose weight, but then you tell yourself, oh, I'm never gonna lose this weight. How does that make you feel? Sad, hopeless, frustrated, and make you feel like giving up, which then makes you not take the actions necessary for you to get to the goal that you want because you no longer feel like it. But imagine replacing that with, Every day I'm getting closer and closer to the body that I wanted and I'm doing everything in my power to make that happen. How does that make you feel? Hopeful, excited, and it makes you feel like you would want to work harder to get to your goal. Therefore, it makes you consistent and persistent towards that goal and helps you get the body you've always been dreaming of. If you want to finish off the year right, and have an even better year coming for you, make sure you work on the way you think and your thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I know we spoke about things like not having the type of life you want or not having everything that you wanted or you thought you would have by now, which then reminds me of the video I made around how to get out of the victim mentality. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check it out. And let me know in the comments, what was it that I shared with you today that you think it brought some value to you? Don't forget to follow me with the same username on TikTok and Instagram so we can stay connected. I love you all. Until later, bye.